In this and the next two tutorials, we're going to be looking at the process of developing a literacy project from the ground up. In other words, in a context where there is initially a very low level of literacy in the community, with no existing written language materials, and where all the materials need to be developed so that people can learn to read and write in their own language. So this tutorial focuses on the development of an alphabet and other aspects of developing a writing system in a previously unwritten language. We're going to look at what an orthography actually is. Of the world's almost 7,000 languages, less than half have an established writing system, even though those languages have clear and complex rules of speech and established patterns of grammar, writing systems to record literature or for people to communicate other than orally have never been developed. Let's look at what writing actually is. Writing is simply a method of representing language in a visual or tactile way and consists of some kind of graphic marks on a durable or an electronic surface. These mar marks systematically relate to significant vocal sounds in the language so that readers can reconstruct a linguistic message and communication is achieved. So um, the graphic marks used in writing are called graphemes and they can be signs, characters, letters, diacritics, marks, anything that's written down in order to communicate. An orthography is the combination of a set of graphemes, also called an alphabet, with a set of rules also that governs their use in writing a particular language. This set of rules or conventions can include rules for spelling, word boundaries, punctuation, um, capitalization, hyphenation, emphasis. English is written using the Latin or Roman alphabet. You can see it here. It has uh, 52 letters, including uh, capitals and small letters, plus all the punctuation marks. And there's a set of rules for how the Latin alphabet should be used when writing English. For example, names must always begin with a capital letter. Questions have to have a question mark at the end. Many other languages also use the Latin alphabet and various notations, diacritics and other things are used to represent necessary features of the particular language being written. Uh, this map here shows the major writing systems used in the world. The main ones are Latin, Cyrillic, Arabic and the Asian logographic scripts like Chinese where units of meaning are depicted rather than sounds in the language. Each of these writing systems is used to represent many different languages for example, the Cyrillic script that's used to write Russian is also used for around a hundred other languages. And the Chinese scripts used to write Japanese and a lot of other languages and dialects. The Arabic scripts used to write more than 40 separate languages. Developing a writing system for an unwritten language is not simply a matter of analysing the language and finding a linguistic solution because a writing system is always a significant social reality for a community. So, sociolinguistic and political issues, the history and the context of the community need to be taken into account as well. There are also other practical issues such as font availability, how easy it will be for people to learn to read and write it. So. If Firstly, we'll look at some of the linguistic issues involved. Um, a good writing system should seek to represent the language in an elegant and simple way. The first step is to do an analysis of the sounds of the language, which is called a phonemic or phonological analysis. And there's an introduction to that in Module 5. 
in tutorials 5.8 and 5.9. There are also a lot of good resources available to help you if you're involved in phonological analysis. A phonological analysis will help you to decide what are the distinctions of sound that must absolutely be represented in the language to avoid confusion. For example, you can see on this slide, in English, pit and bit mean different things in English. So it follows that P and B are different phonemes and they have to be represented by different letters in the written language, otherwise meaning couldn't be communicated. And there are a lot of other examples like that in English. You'll also have to decide how the essential sounds of the language should be spelled. Like, should each distinctive sound unit be represented by only one sign? For example, in English, the P in the initial position, such as in pin, is followed by a little puff of air when we say it. We, we say it pin, it's aspirated. But um, after an S, as in the word spin, the P sound is not aspirated. These two P sounds are actually different sounds, but they never make a difference in meaning in English and only change because of the context in which they occur. So we say they're allophones of the same phoneme and they can be represented by the same letter P in the written language. You'll also have to look at the grammatical structure of the language and how that influences how it should be written down. For example, decisions need to be made about where the word break should be. In the English word walking, uh, the decision could have been made to write it as two separate words, for example. Another question to answer is, does tone have to be represented and are there any other units of meaning that must be written to convey a clear meaning? In many tonal languages, there are a lot of words that would mean exactly the same thing if tone wasn't represented in the written language. Chinese is a tonal language, but it uses characters that represent meaning in a logographic way rather than phonemically or based on sound. But in English, intonation is represented in the written language by punctuation. And we can see an example here, the sentence, she's bought a car, can change significantly by the punctuation that's included in the written language. It can be a question, an exclamation, a uh, innuendo, an implication, and all of those things are indicated simply by punctuation. Another major decision that has to be made is what type of alphabet is it going to be? For example, an alphabet can be a phonetic alphabet where sounds are represented, a non-phonetic alphabet like English. It could be a syllable-based alphabet, meaning that there is only one character per syllable. Tibetan is that kind of alphabet. Or it could be an abjad, which is a consonant-only alphabet, where all the vowels are represented by diacritic marks. Hebrew, as you can see here, is an example of an abjad. The decision about what type of writing system you'll use will probably also be influenced by sociolinguistic and practical issues, which we'll have a look at now. Sociolinguistic and other political factors have to work together with your linguistic considerations when you're developing an orthography, because the orthography really belongs to the community to the speakers and eventual readers and writers of that language. So it's crucial that local people are enthusiastic and accept the orthography so that they feel ownership of it and will be motivated to learn and to use it. So development, testing and making adjustments to an orthography should all involve consultation and discussion with local people. 
During the development stages, um, local people will be your main resource in understanding the socio-linguistic and political factors that need to be considered. Some of these factors are the attitudes toward other languages or dialects in relation to their language. For instance, do they feel that their language is inferior or maybe superior to other languages or dialects, and if so, why? Is there pressure on their language from another major language? Is there another language that has a high status or is of more commercial or educational benefit? Also, what is the influence of other orthographies? What are the other ones that people have come into contact with in their region, like those used for the national language or other major languages? How many people are literate in those other orthographies? And how do people feel about using an existing familiar orthography? Or maybe they'd prefer a new and unique one for their own language. A final consideration to think about is government policies. What are the policies relating to literacy, education, alphabet, scripts? Are there current policies or projects that maybe support particular orthographies? Okay, now we'll look at some more practical issues when you're developing an orthography. Some things like the utility or practical simplicity of the orthography. It should um, naturally re reflect the particular structure of the language in a way that makes sense to the speakers of that language when they read it. A phonetic orthography, for example, where the written form represents the sound, will be easier for people to learn to read and write. And It'll also allow younger members of the community to add new words, to write them and spell them phonetically, which helps the written language to keep pace with the natural changes in the oral language. There are also technical production issues to think about, like what local fonts are most available for printing, word processing or other digital communication in the country. Um, the representation of any characters of, other than those used in major writing systems is going to be a problem because access to special fonts might not be available to the community. The safest option to ensure usability of the, the orthography as a long-term storage of digital files and written material is to use only characters that can be already found on a standard local keyboard or combinations of those characters like digraphs or letters with diacritics. Mm -hmm.